There's quite a chunky gap in there. We've got uh, guitars going on. It's cool. This is a, this is a workshop. We're, we're fine. Um, so you've cleaned up. That's all good. I th I just think the gap filler, thick super glue okay. in the bottom. Now the, the nice thing is that uh, you're going to be clearing the whole fretboard in any case. So it doesn't matter if it spooges out. Spooge it full of glue. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it's, it's perfect. I think it's... Uh, it definitely fits a lot better because yes. the glue was actually quite thick underneath there. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tried to repair this at some point with a gap filling bit of nastiness.
I'm gonna take a look at this nut. Um, there's a lot going on with it. We have changed the strings to some which are a lot thinner. Um, so the slots, of course, in the nut are way too big and they're moving about, um, which is changing some of the string spacings, which isn't very nice. I was thinking of deepening them a little bit to create a little crevice where the string can sit, but I think it would be better to fill it all in with dust and super glue and then recut the slots exactly as we want them to fit these exact strings so we don't have to be messing around with all that basically. And we don't want to change the nut because we want to keep it original. Right, so I've just taken the nut out and given a little little bit of a clean. Uh, there was quite a lot of gunk in the slots. Um, and actually, I can see that the slots are not flat. They're not angled very nicely for the string to sit in. Yeah, so it is definitely a good idea that we're filling it with dust and redoing the slots because that's not an exemplary nut. So as you can see from that clip, um, the nut slots are definitely a bit out. I'm not going to be completely changing them because I think that would look quite bad. Um, you know, the dust is quite white, the nut isn't. So I think at most, when I recut the slots, I'll just be cutting them with a slight bias to the side which it wants to be on. But I think that's about it. And um, yeah, definitely help keep the original feel of the, of the instrument. I did the pencil marking from where the top of the fret is onto the nut. Um, that is a sacred line, never go below it. Um, but I can actually see where the original depth of the slots ended, where, where they were. So I'm gonna be filing the slots down to, to that level. Um, and then I'll be adjusting it actually on the guitar so I can go string by string to get a good depth on, on each slot, basically.
Hello everybody. Ben has just given me this, what he deems to be the coolest guitar of the 1960s. Big statement. Tell us what you think. I mean, I'm inclined to agree. I mean, it's got everything that you might want from a 60s guitar, including this little mute bar here, which you flick up, which currently is kind of making it sound like a sitar, which is pretty awesome in its own right. So here is our mechanism. As you can see, it works beautifully, but this foam has been scored by the strings over, what are we on now? 60 years of playing. Um, now we have the, the metal actually pushing the e -string, e string up, the high E string up and pushing it out of tune and there's basically not enough foam to mute the rest. So we're gonna carefully remove this and replace. Okay, I think that's done. This should now revert back to being a mute rather than a sitar emulator. Okay guys, what I've actually had to do here, I did fill the gaps, but because of the different thicknesses of string, I was finding that some were engaging with the foam, some weren't. Essentially you needed some kind of a, um, an uneven spread over this whole area. So what I've done is I've just laid down a few little strips to cushion each string individually. And it seems to have done the job. So here we go. There it is. So it's now, fairly evenly muting each one of those strings. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, come on, let's play it. I just want to play it. I just want to play it. Okay, guys, so now that is fixed. This thing is, it's a singer. And I mean, isn't it just so cool? It's achingly cool. I mean, Ben thinks that it might be one of the coolest guitars he's seen from the 60s, which I think I agree with so far. But I mean, you know, we're making a guitar museum, so let's see. I'm sure there's more to come. Uh, let's give this a go. I'm gonna start on our bridge pickup. This thing is incredibly dynamic. It's got a, a rhythm and a solo function and the solo function just boosts the whole thing. So I'm gonna start on the solo and then I'll show you the, the rhythm section in a sec. <laughs> And bridge is just incredibly powerful. We've got so much bass coming through here. So just so much dynamic range there. And then let's just give a couple of strummed chords and change our rhythm solo function. So here we go. Mm -hmm. 
right treble on. And here's our rhythm. So it really just dials it back by, you know, 40%, which is incredibly useful. You know, you've just got a lovely warm tone there without any aggression at all. And then you flick one switch and you've got all the drive you could possibly want. I mean, what a fantastic guitar. And uh, this is gonna be one for our, this is definitely a museum piece. Um, so you know what to do, support the museum, go to Great Guitar Giveaway and get more guitars like this into the museum, which you can then come and play. There is one more thing to talk about, which I completely forgot, which is what we've just spent the last half hour fixing is the mute function on here. So let's just see what we can do with that because it's, it's wonderful. Also, the, the cool thing about it, I mean, I know it's obvious, but just by going to mute, you switch it on. And it's just, it's just such a lovely, it's just such a lovely smooth function. Just boink. So especially if you're playing those kind of really 60s kind of surfy riffs. You can just hear. I'd go for like, imagine if you put flat wands on this, you could just play those little riffs all day long. It's just got so much character. You know, if you're, this is like the perfect recording guitar. If you just want to add some special licks, some kind of standout riffs, you've just got all this stuff to play with and all this stuff to experiment with. I just think it's wicked. I love it. There it is.